In this video, we're going to look at how Azure Event Grid can be used to react to events in real time. So if you've used any of Microsoft's messaging services, whether it be Service Bus or IoT Hub, Event Grid fits within that same family. It's a fully managed product by Microsoft, so there's no servers involved, and it's an event routing service. And the benefit of Event Grid is that it provides a, a uniform approach to how to handle events and operates under that publish subscribe model. So this diagram illustrates some of the services that are already out of the box um, natively integrate with Event Grid, whether they be a publisher or a handler. But even if that uh, the product or service that you're looking for um, is not in this list, uh, there is the kind of option to even include third parties via custom topics. Um, so the you know the list of native integration um, across the Azure services, um, so things that are mi currently missing, such as like Data Lake Store and Cosmos DB, um, have been stated to be coming. So the list is constantly growing. Now, before we delve into the demo, it's probably a good idea just to get ahead around like some of the core concepts. So I've already mentioned publishers and handlers. Publishers produce events. They're the the source. Uh, and our event generator. So an event publisher, it may be a storage account and a type of event that a storage account may generate will be whether a blob is you know, created or deleted. Now once those events are being generated, uh, they need to be sent somewhere and that's where topics kick in. So topics are an endpoint where publishers can send events. So you know, blob file has been created, an event gets fired off and triggered and that event is sent to the topic which is the endpoint for ingestion. Now, Event Grid will end up routing if the events, you know, match out a criteria in terms of like maybe we've put some filters in in terms of event type or or prefix and suffix filters, things of that nature. But if um, those events that are matched for delivery will get routed to our subscription. Now, subscriptions is what handlers uh, will subscribe to in order to, for, to receive events as they come in and then handlers can react to those. So a handler may be an Azure function, uh, a logic app, or you know, a Microsoft Flow application, and then typically they'll do something with that event. Now, the, you may be thinking, if it's particularly if you've used um, other services like Service Bus, so there is a lot of kind of similarity, and you know, how do we draw the lines in terms of the key difference? You know, you could, that could be another blog post or video in and of itself, um, trying to do compare and contrast across all the different messaging services. But I'll, I'll give you one. Um, example that may be able to draw that line in the sand. So, um, you have if you have an Azure function as an example that's bound to to a service bus queue. So, in that instance, you have messages that are coming in, and the Azure function is uh, working off that queue. From the developer's perspective, uh, they may seem like they're quite tightly bound, and they, you know things are happening in your in the real time. Um, the only reason why that's the case is because the Azure function is actually hammer polling the service bus. So is it there yet? Is there yet? Is there yet? Um, you know, this is quite inefficient and, and can cost, you know, it can be, uh, it can be quite costly because uh, you're paying for each of those requests. So um, alternatively, Event Grid will only um, send events as they occur. So there's no hammer polling, continuous polling or schedule polling that's required. It's a push-push mechanism, whereas opposed to service bus, for example, uh, while events may be pushed or messages may be pushed into service bus, um, it's pulled um, by handlers. So if we have an event that comes in from the blob storage, such as blob created, that single event is pushed to event grid, which will then push it back out to the handler that's subscribed, whether that be logic app or function. So that's one one example. Um, at the bottom of the my post, I've I've got links to where other people have already kind of gone to great lengths in terms of trying to do compare and contrast across the many Azure messaging services. So it's probably worth um, checking that out. Now, in terms of the demo, um, this is what we're going to be looking at. So we're going to have a blob storage as our publisher, a logic app as a handler, and as I mentioned earlier, you have these events and at the moment storage account supports two types of events, whether they be blob created or blob deleted. So in this example, um, I may have you know, created a file or uploaded a file which will generate a created event and then subsequently deleted that file. Now we have a logic app subscribed 
um, to kind of receive those events, but we're going to set up the subscription in such a way that we only want to filter to blob created events. So while there's two events that have come in, by the time the event grid has done its matching, uh, only a single event ends up getting delivered, and then we'll handle that event. In this example, we'll send off uh, an email. So you'll need a valid um, Azure subscription in terms of prerequisites. Uh, and the two resources is the storage account, mine's uh, general purpose v2, and the logic app. So the only other important thing to note is uh, the location. Uh, at the moment, Event Grid's only supported in regions across the US, Europe, and Asia. So if you're keen to play with the Event Grid, um, you're going to need to spin up resources within a, uh, one of those supported regions. Um, again, that's probably changing quite frequently, so you'd have to check the region availability. So I've pre-created those. We'll jump into um, our Logic app. So you can see here, um, there's a the you know event grid is a common trigger. We can use that as a template. But I'll start off with a blank Logic app. So we'll search event grid. Okay. So event grid is going to be our trigger. So we'll just sign in. So once you're authenticated, um, every because of the first class integration, um, we don't have to do any code. It's all just kind of drop down menu based. So we'll pick our subscription. So here's all the different uh, supported resource types. And you, you, if you look at this list, you'll notice that it's kind of marries up with the list of um, supported publishers. So we got IoT hubs, event hubs, and this counts. In this case, we'll pick a storage account. And it should pick up the storage account that's within my subscription. And there it is there. So we've got the uh, data lake at zero, zero. Now, for now, we'll just leave, we, in terms of the advanced options, we've got some of that filtering or pattern matching. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it all as blank. So uh, we, we're saying to the Logic app that we want to subscribe to events that are coming out of um, the storage account. So we'll add a new step. So the next step in terms of the action, I want to be able to um, send an email um, via my Gmail account with details around the event. So this is going to be a blob to event grid to logic app. Now in terms of the body, I've got a template, so we'll just use this. Okay, so by default, um, within a logic app uh, for an email, we can include some HTML. So I've got event time, event type, event ID, and event subject. And on the right-hand side, you can see we've got our dynamic um, content. So we'll just click on those and include those in our message. This is the example of metadata that's being passed by the event. And that's pretty much it. So we'll save that. Okay. So I haven't even needed to go to my storage account at the moment. I haven't needed to write any code. Um, and we've set up our Logic app to subscribe to uh, events. And in this case, at the moment, it's all events that happen within the storage account. At the moment, it recognizes two, creation and deletion. And we're going to send an email every time that happens. So if we go over to Storage Explorer, okay, so we'll create a container. We'll call this, you know, Drop Zone. Okay, so if we upload our file to our container. So that should have a generated event. The, the action of me um, uploading the, the text file um, is an event of blob creation. So now if we go back and check our email, there's our message. So that's come from event grid in near, near real time. So if we open that up, you can see some of the types of metadata that's within our message. So we've got 
the time the event happened, um, what type of event it was, the event ID, and the path, um, which you know we, we may want to, when we're handling, want to pull that apart and that might give us some information in terms of how to handle that event. Okay, so let's now apply um, some of those filters. So if we go um, back out to our resource group and open up the storage account, You can see event grid on the left hand side. So this is the way that event grid kind of surfaces itself. Um, it's not a resource in and of its own right. It's baked in natively uh, with the uh, resources that there's first class support. So there's our subscription. So you can see the, the name of our subscription, the endpoint where events are being sent via the storage account, what type, it's just, you know, it's a webhook. Um, and a subscription. So at the moment we've got checked that you know we want to subscribe to all events. I want to uncheck that and specifically say I'm only interested in uh, created events. So, uh, similarly, we can add uh, another filter to say oh, we only want like TXT files as an example. So if we save those changes. We go back to our uh, storage explorer. So if we delete this file, while an event may have been fired, um, it's it's not going to match our criteria. So we're not going to get an email in that instance. Similarly, if I upload a different file like a CSV. it's not going to match the suffix criteria because we specifically asked for just .txt. So if we upload another file, it's only in this last instance where we have now an event that's matched um, that's going to cause another email to come. So if we go back to our email, and there's that single event created of the txt. So just to show you that it's working, we can go back and now change this to CSV. I've uploaded uh, both the CSV and the TXT, but um, we're only going to get now an event on the CSV being created. So if we go back to the email, and there you've got the single event of the CSV. So that's it. Um, as I mentioned, while we were playing with uh, you know blob storage and, and the th those types of events, you have all these other uh, resources within Azure that natively support Event Grid. In terms of the custom topics, um, custom topics is a resource that you can create within the Azure portal. And this essentially allows third parties to um, send and send events to be ingested by event grid to then subsequently be uh, handled by um, another resource. So um, you may have, as an example, an application that's even sitting in another cloud. Uh, maybe it's sitting in AWS, but you want certain events that happen there to be handled by resources that you have within Azure. So you can create a custom topic, which will just be an endpoint. And in that example, your third party can fire events and direct them towards that particular endpoint, that custom topic, which then can be handled by n number of handlers. So that's it. Uh, for more details, uh, check out the blog posts, uh, but otherwise it's a wrap.